the girl that's being held prisoner has been harmed in any way, you two men can toss coins to see which one I gun down first. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Yes, Mr. Laird. Uh, in regard to that matter we were discussing this morning, well, I've given it a little thought and... Uh, Mr. Paladin. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Laird. Uh, over here, hey boy. Oh, Mr. Paladin, a telegraph message come just now for you. Here. Thank you. Uh, as I was saying, Paladin, uh, I've given a thing some thought, and uh, while I must admit you drive a hard bargain... Hey, boy, I want you to help me with my things. I'll be leaving. Uh, Paladin, I'm prepared to meet your terms. Three thousand dollars. I'm sorry. I've just received a better offer. A better offer? How much? Not a cent, Mr. Laird. This offer has nothing to do with money. Dandruff bothers most men, most women, too, so listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all eating shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Telegram read, need you urgently. Barton Ranch, Three Rivers, California. That's all. But that was enough because it was signed Phyllis Thackeray. Three Rivers wasn't far, a hard day's ride. And as I rode through the spring morning, I thought about Dr. Phyllis Thackeray. Our trails had crossed just once, briefly, but I'd never forgotten her. A courageous doctor and a very special kind of a woman. It was near sundown when I rode up to the Barton Ranch House. Yes? My name is Paladin. Oh, yes, sir. Come in. I'm Tom Barton. Dr. Thackeray asked me to send you the telegraph message. Where is she? We don't need you here, mister. Go on back to San Francisco. Who are you? This is my father. He owns this ranch. I'm here to see the doctor. Where is she? That telegram was a mistake. My son and I can handle things here. I want to see Dr. Thackeray, and I want to see her now. Now, wait a minute. I'll give you just that, mister. One minute to show me that girl. You walk into my house and get rough with me, and I'll have now, you... Now, Pa, there's no reason for any fuss. Mr. Paladin just wants to see the doctor. That's your way, isn't it, Tom? Back away from anything tougher than a stake. Fall over and play dead when the man tells you to. That's not true, Pa. I, I just don't believe in fighting when there's no fight called for. It. Nor at any other time. Where is the doctor? There, in the study. Who is it? Paladin. Come 
Come in. Shut the door and bolt it. Paladin, my patient here is very sick, and it's contagious. Are you all right? I was vaccinated two years ago back east, but anyone can carry the germ. It's... it's smallpox. I see. I should have said something in the telegram. You're afraid I wouldn't come? Would you have? I didn't have anything important to do. Paladin. And I've been vaccinated, too. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Paladin. How long have you been here by yourself? I guess I've lost count. Any sleep? Well, I... You need rest. Sit down on that cot. Is that coffee hot? Yes. Uh, you take a half teaspoon of sugar, don't you? You remember. <laughs> Lots of things. Here. Thank you. Why did you send for me? To help me do my duty as a doctor. At the point of your gun, if necessary. Uh-huh. It's serious, Paladin. The man on the cot over there, Nate, was the chuck wagon cook on the roundup. They sent him back to the ranch when he got too sick to work. He could have infected every man in the outfit. I have to see that each one of them is vaccinated. Well? well? There's a supply of vaccine at Fort Landis, and I've sent them a telegraph message. But it'll be three days before it gets here. The men will be back in the morning. Three days? Well, can't they wait? Those men have worked six months without a break. They have six months' pay coming. They'll be so anxious to get paid off and get into Stockton, they won't wait for anything. Well, when you explain about the smallpox... Well, that's the trouble. We have to keep that a secret. They'd run like rabbits if they knew. You want me to keep them here? Yes. Paladin, you'll have to. All right. I'll do what I can. And Dr. Thackeray, you'll have to get some sleep. Oh, no, I... Come on. Lie down there. I'll cover you with this blanket. But Nate... I'll watch Nate. If there's any change, I'll call you. Now, come on. Settle down. Get some rest. I'll take over. Be careful. You're going to land in a bathtub. Who's driving this flying saucer, you or me? Well, what do you see? Oh, germs. Millions and millions of germs. Sure, here on Earth, disease germs and viruses live in bathrooms. Wait, here comes a lady. She's putting a dash of Lysol in with those suds and she's mopping the floor. Wow, look at those germs and viruses drop dead. Boy, are you stupid. I thought all Martians knew that Lysol brand disinfectant kills disease germs and many deadly viruses on contact. Disinfects from one cleaning to the next as nothing else can. That's right. I remember my seven grandmothers saying Lysol makes your favorite cleaner work better, including many that claim to sanitize. I'm sorry you learned to speak English by listening to commercials. And Lysol comes in regular or pine fragrance for as little as 29 cents. How much is that Martian money? <laughs> Paladin. How's Nate? He's no better. Dr. Thackeray thought you should know. I should have got Nate off his place when he first come back. I understand the men who are with him on the roundup will be back in the morning. That's right. And if he dies, there'll be no way of concealing the cause of death. There'll be a stampede from this ranch in all directions. Let him go. You can't. Every man allowed to leave this spread without a vaccination could be carrying death to who knows how many people. Had some men, they're back early. We're not going to be able to handle them, Pa. Well, I'm going to try. You're back early, Fred. Boys in a hurry to get paid off, Mr. Barton. Uh, we're leaving come early morning. <laughs> Fred, why don't you come on in the house? Got to have a little talk before you go anyway. Sure thing. I'll be back right after I get things put straight. You just get our pay ready meanwhile. 
Come on, fellas. Yeah, Missy ain't gonna be able to handle those men. Look, they work for you. Which of you is gonna give the orders to keep them here? I didn't ask for this fuss. Tom? Uh, well, Fred Cooley's the range boss. Uh, it'd be a waste of breath talking to him. He'll do what he wants. No, he won't. He'll do what he's made to do. What you tell him to do, Tom. But Fred won't listen to me. Tom, you went against my orders, getting that female doctor in here, keeping Nate on the place. You started this. Now let's see you try to finish it. Uh, now wait a minute, Paul. This will be your ranch one day, son. You ought to be running it now. He's right, Tom. Sooner or later, whoever is foreman will have to start taking orders from you. Nobody's going to stand by you with a gun for the rest of your life. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll try. I hope he does it. He wasn't such a weakling. Tom will be all right. He's got no gumption. You gotta fight, Paladin. Talk's no good. Barton, I've let my gun speak for me too many times. Believe me, words are better. We'll see. Hours passed, and Phyllis slept fitfully while I sat watching the sick man. The false dawn was just beginning to break when I heard the men coming up from the bunkhouse. I walked out into the front room. Barton sat in a chair by the dying fire. They're coming. Yeah, it's after five o'clock. Let's go meet him. Well, boys, Mr. Barton, what about this here talk of Tom's? I think you ought to apologize. Uh, Steve Pauly here thinks Tom was serious about our not getting paid off this morning. I think I'd apologize. Steve, just simmer down. Now, I said Tom was funning with us. Who was right, Mr. Barton, me or Steve? Where is Tom? What about our money, Mr. Barton? We want it now, don't we, boys? We sure do. And that's how it'll be. There's a strong box in your study, Mr. Barton. You get our money out and ready now. We're riding out, son up. Cooley, you're talking to me now, not my son. I know who I'm talking to. Now, wait a minute. I ain't waiting, not at all. Either you open that safe or we break it open right now. You step up onto this porch, I'll put a bullet in you. Well? You can't shoot us all, Mr. Barton. And that money is due, I He see. said you're not going in there. What's your business here, mister? I'm just helping a friend. Hmm. All right. Sun-up's in an hour. Gonna take me that hour to gather my gear together. Then I'm coming right back here for my pay and riding out. Don't try to stop me. It's up to you. <laughs> you know something, mister? You're right. It is up to us. Now, hold on, Steve. I ain't gonna hold on for nobody. I don't figure to wait until sunup. Don't be a fool. Oh. He's not hurt bad. A couple of you men, get him back to the bunkhouse and take care of that arm. We'll do just that, mister. And then we'll be back. Phyllis? Paladin, come in. I heard shots. That's all right. How's your patient? His pulse is steadier. Fever's no better, though. If he can only make it until daylight, he'll have a chance. More quinine? Not for a while. Is there anything I can do for you, then? Yes. Talk to me. Keep me awake. Talk to you? That's not so easy anymore. You've never had any trouble finding words. Well, the words are easy enough. The words that don't count. But now, with you... It's different. Is it, Paladin? It's because we're the kind of people we are. What kind of people are we, Paladin? We're neither of us ready for marriage. You have to go on with your work because it's important to you and to the people who need you. And you have to go on with your work because... 
Because you're you. Yes. Paladin, I'm confused. Have you been proposing? No. No, I've been explaining why I haven't proposed. Oh. Well, it's flattering. I know there aren't many women to whom you feel it necessary to explain why you're not proposing. This is the first time. I, I believe it's time now for Nate's quinine. Can I help? No, I think... Paladin. He's better. His fever's dropped. I think he's going to live. You've done your job well, Doctor. I hope I meet with as much success with mine. You hear that? It's been a long night. Paladin. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad, I guess. Hmm? That we're the kind of people we are. Oh. Of course. For now. <laughs> well, you've got work to do. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Out front. I've got a little job to do at sunup. Like to listen while you work? Then here's a reminder that each Monday through Friday over most of these CBS radio stations, you'll find a wealth of dramatic serials that are designed to keep you the best of company. We don't guarantee that they'll turn your housework into play, but they will help to speed it along. So you plan to listen. Take The Couple Next Door, for instance. Family comedy at its hilarious, warm-hearted best. You can be sure of one chuckle after another as you listen to the daffy diary of Mr. and Mrs. Piper and their small brood. The Pipers are prone to a peck of pretty pickles, which means for you, a peck of smiles. You'll enjoy hearing such longtime favorites as The Couple Next Door, The Romance of Helen Trent, Right to Happiness, Ma Perkins, The Second Mrs. Burton, Young Dr. Malone, and Whispering Streets. Each Monday through Friday, make it a point to keep your dial set for CBS Radio and first-rate daytime dramatic entertainment. It's almost sunrise, Barton. Well, Fred Cooley will be here. I know him. I'll be waiting. It's not for you to do. I don't like this, letting another man do my work or my son's work. Where is Tom? He's still out somewhere. I guess he just don't have what it takes. I'll have to handle this myself. I'll be back. Tom? Tom? Over here, Paladin. Saddling your horse, what's the idea? I guess you might say I'm figuring to run out. Oh? Paul's right. I can't face up to a fight. I tried to talk to the men. I did the best I could. I know you didn't. What's more, you probably did as well as anyone could. But I failed. Tom, there's a rifle hanging on the wall in your house there. It's a symbol of an unfortunate truth. Sometimes talk has to be backed up with action. Paul don't think too much of me. He thinks you're a weakling. And he'll be sure of it if you run away. Your father's trying to give you a chance to prove yourself. This is going to be your ranch, Tom. Don't quit it. Fallon! Tom! Yeah, Pa? Dr. Thackeray, she's hurt. She... Come on. Where is she? Over there. Tell you, he was half out of his mind. Come in the back door. Phyllis. <clears throat> Phyllis. Who did this? That study door was open. He seen Nate in there, and when he found out about the smallpox, he just went plumb loco. When I tried to stop him, he hit me with his six gun. Who was it? Dr. Thackeray. She tried to reason with him, but he was crazy scared. He hit her, knocked her down. Who did? Cooley. It was Fred Cooley. Where is he? Started on down to the bunkhouse. Said he was getting out of here. Paladin, wait! Go away, Paladin. 
I'm leaving this place fast. Not, not now. I'll beat you right down and run. rifle's going to back up my words. It's one thing to shoot a man, another to beat him to death. I'll put a bullet in you if I have to. I would, I would, I'll handle this. All right. Yeah. All right, Tom. It seems like you've kind of taken over the running of things, doesn't it? Three days later, the courier from Fort Landis arrived with the vaccine. With his newfound authority, Tom had no trouble keeping the men in line. The iron hand in the velvet glove. On a rifle butt. Are the men ready, Paladin? As soon as you are, Doctor, they're lined up outside. The sleeves rolled up? Mm Mm-hmm. They don't quite know what to expect, but Tom's holding them there with a rifle. (laughs) You know, you know, you're quite a doctor. When I became a doctor, I took an oath, which in part says, I will prescribe for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment. Draw your gun, Paladin, and bring him in. Oh, Mr. Paladin, so happy to see you back. Stay there, hey boy. Keep your distance. What? Keep your distance. Well, uh, uh, something the matter, Mr. Paladin? Uh, faulty memory, that's all. If anyone asks for me, I'll be back in half an hour. Oh, yes, Mr. Paladin. But uh, uh, where are you going? I have an appointment to get a vaccination. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Stanley Silverman and Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Lou Krugman, and Lawrence Dobkin. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>